And you're now watching Asia Today on CCTV News. Back to this country, China is set to conduct its third docking with the Tiangong-1 lab module as the Shenzhou-10 manned spacecraft is expected to launch Tuesday evening. Three astronauts will be sent to space for the mission. They spoke to the press on Monday. Yu Li is more. At 5.38 p.m. Beijing time Tuesday, the third Chinese manned spacecraft, Chenzhou-10, will be launched to the space from the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center in northwest China. The final phase of preparations have begun, with the modified Long March 2F carrier rocket now being transported to the launch site and fueled up. The spokeswoman for the Chinese space program said the Shenzhou-10 mission is a stepping stone toward building China's space capability. This mission aims to better test technologies for docking and supporting the astronauts stay in space and try new technologies related to the construction of a space station. The rocket will carry three crew members, including China's second female astronaut, to the Tiangong-1, a target orbiter and space module sent to space in 2011. The captain of the crew, Nie Haisheng, and Wang Xiaoguang will carry out two dockings between Shenzhou-10 and Tiangong-1 lab module, one automatic and the other manual. Later in the mission, Wang Yaping, the only female crew member, will give a video lecture from inside the Tiangong-1 to a group of Chinese students on the ground. She will show them some of the team's projects and what it's like to be weightless in space. I will demonstrate some physics experience done in the space environment. As an astronaut, I'm also a learner, like those students. I think we will learn together and have a great time in space. The spacecraft will spend 15 days in orbit before returning to Earth. The CCTV. And for the latest, we're joined by reporter Wang Yizhu, who has been covering China's space development over the years and now is in Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. Well, good evening, Yizhu. Good evening, Zhu We understand the spacecraft is on the launch pad and will set to go in 20 hours. Tell us about the final preparations. Well, night has just fallen on a Jiuquan launch center. But for the people working at the launching site, it will be a long and busy night. Like you said, the fueling of the rocket has already started and will last well into midnight. Uh, like you said, propellant is being injected into the boosters. Now, let me explain this process to you. Uh, this means the mission is now irreversible because the booster tanks are a one-time component. And this means the rocket must either be launched or disposed after fueling. So this is considered to be the most important task in the final stage of the preparation. But the three astronauts will be uh, enjoying a simple and quiet night. They are now in their uh, quarantine apartments. They can definitely use some good sleep today, uh, one day before the launch. But early tomorrow morning on Tuesday, they'll have to get up really early and practice one last time of the rendezvous and docking, docking techniques, which they have already been practicing for almost 2,000 times. Uh, let's take a look at the weather forecast. The weather forecast for tomorrow is sunny with temperature between uh, 14 to 34 degrees Celsius, quite ideal for a launch. And more detailed hour-by-hour hour forecast will be issued tomorrow. So, so, yeah, let's keep our fingers crossed. Of course, you were there last year during Shenzhou 9's launch. It seems uh, it's pretty uh, similar mission, the same spaceship, the same crew makeup, but how different is it? Yeah, technically speaking, there's no major technical breakthroughs in this mission. Uh, major technologies used in this mission are very similar with that of the Shenzhou 9 last year. Uh, but this mission will see three astronauts staying in space for a total of 15 days. That is the longest day ever in China's past missions. And there's also um, a uh, space teaching, a space lesson, a space class in the on-orbit uh, on capsule. And this is also the first practical use of manned space system traveling to and back from space because the past missions uh, are, are all considered to be mainly test rather than use the technologies on board the spacecraft. Like I said, the mission will further uh, strengthen the ability to rendezvous and dock the space capsules and the uh, woman astronaut Wang Yaping will teach a physics class from the orbiting capsule to primary and middle school students on Earth. This is aimed at, at, at attracting more children to China's space program. And so, yeah, China is really a newcomer in the manned space club and definitely needs more younger enthusiasts.
Definitely, all the kids are looking forward to that. Thank you very much, Yijir, for your reporting. But China's space ambitions date back to the 1960s. The country's first satellite launch in Jiuquan in China's northwestern Gansu province has sent 29 satellites already into space. A reporter Tang Bo has this report. About 20 minutes drive from Dongfeng Space City is China's very first satellite launch center. It is called Base 2, where China started its space program in the 1960s. Once fully occupied with the country's top space scientists, it's now only guarded by six soldiers. The chief designer of the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center, Xu Kejun, used to work there, and he tells me why people had to leave. After decades of operation, launch facilities at Base 2 became less suitable for more launch missions. The old umbilical towers and related facilities couldn't meet the needs of the new launch technologies for China's manned space program. That's why we need to build a new launch center and abandon this old one. Although deprecated, Base 2 still inspired Xu on the design of the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. We adopted the vertical testing and short-term vertical transportation systems that were used at Base 2 in our design of the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. The new launch techniques actually originate from the old site. In total, 29 satellites were launched from the old site, not mentioning missions for launch vehicle testing. And this is the launch pad from where China's very first satellite blasted off in 1970. It's no longer operational and serves as an educational base. And in the more than 40 years since that launch, China's space program has made tremendous progress. Today, China is one of the major players in the space arena. Chinese communication satellites and weather satellites provide China and other customers with their valuable services. In 2003, China became the third country with a successful crewed space program by sending an astronaut into space aboard Shenzhou 5 spacecraft. Five years later, Chinese astronauts on board the Shenzhou 7 spacecraft completed their first spacewalk. In 2011, China launched the first module of their space station, the Tiangong-1, and successfully completed the docking with Shenzhou 9 spacecraft China has also turned its focus to deep space exploration, starting with the moon. It launched the country's first lunar orbiter, Chang'e 1, in late 2007, making China the fifth nation to orbit the moon. Xu tells me that the old launch center carries the hard-working spirit of Chinese space working staff, and that will continue to inspire more people to contribute as China's space program moves forward. Tang Bo, CCTV, Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center.